In this lecture, we will talk about class three. And this is one of the fundamental problems in both machine learning and data mining. If you remember the big picture of our course, we are actually currently here in the second episode of our first flat, which is mining and learning high dimensional data. So what is clustering and why do we need it? Usually we're given a cloud of data points and we may want to understand its structure. And one way to do this is by grouping them into clusters. And formally, the problem of clustering can be uh, formulated as given a set of points and with the notion of distance between the points. And we want to group the points into some number of clusters such that members of a cluster are close or similar to each other. And the members of the different clusters are dissimilar or far away from each other. And usually points are in a high dimensional space and similarity can be defined using some distance measure. For example, Euclidean distance, cosine distance, Jacquard distance, or even added distance. For example, let's say that we have a lot of points and these points can be grouped into three clusters, cluster one, cluster two, and cluster three. And there might also be outliers, which are these two points. And it might look easy at first brush, but clustering can sometimes be a very difficult problem. And you can, as you can see here, clusters may have different shape. It may have different density. And sometimes it may not have very clear boundaries, for example, this cluster and this cluster. Besides, although clustering in two dimensions looks easy, Clustering in small amount of data also looks easy, but many applications actually involve not two, but 10 or even 10,000 dimensions. So that might be very, very difficult. Let's say that, for example, we have a lot of music CDs and intuitively music can be divided into categories, right? And customers may prefer a few of the categories, but what are the categories really? Can we automatically discover these categories using clustering? One idea is that we can represent a CD by a set of customers who bought it. And naturally, similar CD will have similar sets of customers and vice versa. More formally, we can imagine a space of all CDs and we, with, we can think of a space with one dimension for each customer and values in one dimension or each entry in, in a vector can just be one or zero. And for example, let's say that we have CD1 and CD2 and we only have five customers and CD1 is bought by customer one, customer three and customer four. Therefore, this CD can be represented by this binary vector. And similarly, CD2, if they're bought by the last three customers, it can also be represented by this other vector. Note that for Amazon, they have a lot of, lot of customers. Therefore, the dimension of each data point or each CD may be in the tens of thousands. And the task we have, of course, is to find the clusters of similar CDs. A different problem, which is also very interesting, is to find topics among a lot of documents. And what we can do is that we can represent each document using a vector, where each entry in the vector represents a word, or more specifically represent whether one word appears in the document. For example, let's say that we have a very small vocabulary of five words, and uh, if the document one has three words appear in the document, word one, three, and four, then we can use this binary factor to represent this document. And similarly, document two, you can see that it has only two words. And of course, documents with similar set of words may be about the same topic. And one important problem for 
every clustering algorithm is how to define a similarity metric. For example, if each item can be represented as a vector, then we can probably measure the similarity by cosine distance. Or if the items can be represented as sets, then we can probably measure the similarity by Jacquard distance. And last but not least, if the items can be represented as points, for example, points in the two-dimensional or three-dimensional, or even 100-dimensional space, we can probably measure the similarity by including distance. And as an overview, in general, you will have two types of uh, clustering algorithms. The first type is hierarchical algorithms, and it can be further categorized into two sets of approaches. The first set will be a glomative approach. Uh, they, sometimes they are also called bottom-up approach. And it goes like this. Initially, we will set each point as a cluster. And we will repeatedly combine the two nearest clusters into one, as, as we can see in this diagram here, if we, we, we look at this diagram from the bottom to the top. And the second set of approaches is divisive approach, or sometimes also called a top-down approach. Usually, we will start with one cluster, which contains all the points, and we will recursively split it, as we can see in this diagram, from the bottom to the uh, from the top to the bottom. Sorry. And the second type of algorithms will be point assignment, and usually we will maintain a set of clusters and we will assign the points to the nearest cluster repeatedly, for example, k-means. And next, we will cover these approaches one by one. 